Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to the A to Z of Geography. Today we are on the letter D, and so what do you think the most populated country for D is? If you're like me, you might assume Denmark or the Dominican, but you'd be forgetting that technically there are lots of countries that start with D just because they have democratic in their title. Or, to be precise, there is the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea, and there is Dr. Congo. Or, if we zoom in on Google Maps, you'll see that its name unabbreviates into Democratic Republic of the Congo. It's actually interesting, this is the only country that Google Maps does this for, uh, as you can see every other country you either see the name or you don't. You can see Syria and Iraq but you can't see Jordan till you zoom in. The same thing is true for the Central African Republic. It doesn't show as CAR till you get close enough but Dr. Congo will show just DRC until you get really really close in there because even Google can't be bothered with their ridiculously long title. However it is just one of the two Republic of the Congos uh, that exist out there which is mildly confusing to some and the other thing that's mildly confusing is just what is going on here. Even though the DRC is the second largest African country by land area, the 11th largest in the world. Um, it is a country that most people just know something something colonialism about and in my opinion that is one of the biggest disservices. People who just look at the entire African continent and go yeah the whole thing's affected by colonialism. It's like no 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 you are missing out on the horrors of what is happening here and uh, you know just to give you a tiny bit of backstory I think that it's worth mentioning unlike the rest of these countries which were at some point owned by some European power uh, Dr. Congo was the personal possession of the King of Belgium. He just owned this himself and he did some real atrocities and and I'm not going to tell you about them. I can't help you out. I will not be lending you a hand, and I hope that you understand why if you've looked into it. But long story short, we'll be leaving that to the side to focus on the modern-day DRC state, because it is, indeed, one of the most interesting countries on the planet, just for its physical geography, and let's talk about why that is. Dr. Congo borders nine other African nations. And for those of you who think that the worst thing that Europeans can do to a country is draw straight lines through it, the good news is basically all of these borders are defined by a river of some form. You can find there is a river to the west at the Congo River, which separates Congo from Congo. You can find to the north, the Central African Republic is separated by the Ubungai and uh, the Umbongo River. This is an interesting set of rivers that you can find, which basically mean they have a very natural land frontier. No wars between the Central African Republic and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I mean, DRC, CRA, it would get too complicated if they had a war anyway, and so they've decided not to, thankfully. Uh, South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo also share a border, and it's one of the more recent borders in the world, because South Sudan is so new. Um, again, very uh, stress-free border defined by some very natural uh, features, and this is something you see continuing all the way down the east of the country. The only parts where I feel like people have issues with it are this point in Zambia right here, and indeed this point with the Republic of the Congo and with Angola. There is a very weird stretch of land here where there's Point Noir, which is a part of Congo, then there is Kabinda, a part of Angola, then there's Kitombe, which is a part of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and then we're back to Angola again. What exactly happened here? The long story short of it is that when uh, Africa was being settled by Europeans, uh, they settled on the coast first. The inland of the continent was vastly unknown, even as they were starting to divvy up between the various uh, powers at the time, and so where, you know, uh, Portugal uh, believed that they had a full right to all of this coastal claim, and and they only gave up a small strip of land so that Congo could have uh, sea access and uh, that is how the border has retained to this day. Uh, the Kabinda part of uh, Angola at one point wanted to stage some war for their independence, uh, however this never came to be and uh, the other interesting thing that's worth mentioning is that the border over here was basically also due to, yeah it was settled and then, like, oh, again settled in the European sense of the word, there were many native people living here that should be uh, worth mentioning, but settled in the European sense of the word and then as you can see there is a river which they agreed would be the border and they didn't realize that that river would eventually end in a lake. They figured it could keep following it all the way down and so that resulted in them having to be like, okay, let's just cut this one back and then we'll work our way back over there. And so that is how you have the strangest looking country. If you ever wonder why Zambia looks like it has a hole out of it, it's the Democratic Republic of the Congo just sticking out a bit too far, daring to have a river, which again, this is why you should probably go look at rivers before assuming they should be the border between two nations. Indeed, when you look at uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo's borders of everyone else, it is a very tricky state to be in. It is almost a landlocked country, really only having, uh, you know, like the uh, its main capital and being able to like follow a river to get all the way out of the country. And ultimately, it leads to a very uh, tricky to develop country. The, the DRC is one of the poorest nations on Earth on a per capita basis. I believe it's 189th on the planet. And developing that much further without access to the world is very, very challenging. Being landlocked is a struggle, and being landlocked besides one river, ultimately, which you're capital has access to means that the population uh, split becomes very very clear something we'll discuss as we dive into the 
Dr. Congo is divided into 25 provinces and their capital, which is separate from the whole system. However, each of these 25 provinces, which you can see are very multicolored, are then further divided into territories and cities. The cities are in red and kind of control themselves, while the territories are then divided into communes, sectors, and regions. Then each of these are divided into chiefdoms and quarterings, and then beyond that, there are villages, which are the lowest level of government. It is a five-tier system of government, which isn't actually a bad idea. And when looking at this map, you might assume that it's a fairly evenly divided country, outside of maybe the capital region over there. However, interestingly, looking at a population map, you can see that very much the capital city is so far head and shoulders above everything else, despite being fairly small. And then the population is mostly evenly divided, outside of alongside the river, uh, to the east over here, where there is Lake Albert, Lake Edward, and Lake Kiwu, and the connecting rivers. Uh, this seems to be the more populated and prosperous east of the country, while everything else is very, very lightly populated, but still, uh, that means a million to two million people, because this is a large strip of land with many different types of people living there, and it's very important to reference this as we say that, yeah, the Dr. Congo is a country which, uh, you know, as we dive into the population pyramid, uh, is a country that has a very, the most stretched uh, and ridiculously sized shape of a population pyramid I think I've ever seen. If you look at this, uh, so the population right now is 102 million, but if I was, uh, you know, if, if we talk about the earlier days of my channel, as we did for the Bangladesh episode, um, if I were to make a video just five years ago, halfway into this channel's history, uh, then I would have a thumbnail saying there were 82 million people there. They have grown by 20 million people in five years, something you can see by the fact that there have been almost 20 million births in that time, meaning that you can, uh, or rather there are 20 million children uh, in that time, and that means that you will see that in just, uh, I, I don't know, to give a good example, there have been a Denmark's worth of people being born in the Dr. Congo in just the last 15 to 18 months. There has been a you know, population the size of Scotland is being born on a very regular basis, which means that looking at their population future, they are just starting their demographic boom. By being one of the poorest nations on earth, they are suffering in many ways, and there's a big, uh, again, we're trying to avoid the humanity issues because this isn't what that's all about today, um, but there are a lot of issues of you know, resources in the country, etc. Um, but what this is leading to in an indirect term is a huge population boom. They will have more people than the United States of America, despite 50 years ago having as many people as Denmark, and that is an insane fact to think about and something uh, which is why many people have that fear about like, oh yeah, we, we've got too many people on planet Earth. What they really mean is there's too many people being born in Dr. Congo, something which, again, is fascinating to how do you go, how do you have 20 million babies born in five years? How do you ever set up the infrastructure for that? And the answer is, this is the struggle for a country. When you don't have many resources to go around, uh, somehow this leads to more problems popping up. This leads to the issues of how are you going to, uh, without the money, how do you pay for the infrastructure to build up that money in the future? Without the money, how do you pay for the decent services and education that will lead uh, to you having fewer... It's a fascinating issue to deal with, and the De Dr. Congo has a very, very big one. Perhaps the biggest we will show on this uh, in this series. Again, when you compare this to Algeria, which is very middle income, you can see just how flattened this gets by comparison. And you can kind of tell a lot about an African nation uh, by how well it conquers this pyramid. Or indeed, depending on your view of what the most important factor for a nation is, is having a rich population important? Or does it just matter to have a large number? By growing their population fourfold, they will become a four times richer nation, even if the per capita income changes nothing whatsoever. And so uh, there is an interesting question in here. And rather than answering it myself, because I think it's too philosophical for this channel, uh, let's instead talk about the idea of, wow, did you know uh, that the Dr. Congo is a place you can visit? I mean, I wouldn't recommend visiting anywhere near Rwanda or Burundi. That's not me recommending, I should say. That is the UK government saying, just avoid the east of the country altogether. Don't go. Your travel insurance will not cover you. Uh, don't go to the north either. Don't go to like the, the you know, don't, don't go to Mabuji Mayi here over here of Eva uh, Luebo and Kinsasha. I guess if you really gotta go, I guess we can make it work. But otherwise, probably shouldn't be going there. And if you did want to go, I'm, I'm kind of curious, what are the entry requirements? Do you need a visa? You need to get a visa for traveling. There's a departure tax of $55 on international flights, as well as $10 on domestic flights. Is it really a departure tax? If you, well, whatever, anyway, uh, these are official pay, uh, fees paid when checking in. Get an official receipt plus a copy of each fee, blah, 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 blah. And uh, if you're transiting, you uh, still 
still have to pay the fee. Okay, that's like I I wouldn't recommend transiting there. And also, all British passport holders need to get a visa. You can't buy a short-term pass to enter the country. So uh, yeah, pro tip: if you're gonna go, that's something you should keep in mind. And the local laws and customs are do not be homosexual. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's it's frowned upon. Uh, and also, you should not adopt children from the DRC. And you should not wear military-style clothing. And so I hope that if there's nothing you learn from this video, it's that if you're going to visit, get ready to pay. Uh, don't be gay. And uh, make sure that you don't dress in a certain way. There we go. Nailed it. More, more seriously, though, I think Dr. Congo... Uh, the, again, the, the interesting shift that we're going to see over the next 100 years are that there are giant population booms happening in various African nations, and these are going to lead to these countries, even with no changes whatsoever, growing in influence in huge ways. And if you want to actually know what is going to change in a realistic way, a big thing is that, yes, yeah, so lots and lots of countries will shrink over the next hundred years, and others will double, triple, or in the case of Dr. Congo, quadruple in size. And uh, it's something uh, to keep your eyes on. Or, you know, if you're... I, I, I feel like um, one, of, one of my points I always try to make is, like, if you're the sort of person that's like, oh, I don't like that there's too many people in the world, you know, that would be a reason to invest in uh, countries like this. If they became richer and more educated, um, and I, I guess it, it, there are many factors you could lead to if you think that's scary. And I think uh, this this is one of those points I always try to raise on this channel, is that I don't, I, I, I'm not here to make moral points about right and wrong. I'm here to say that one of the valuable things that aid can do is to help out people in places like this. <laughs> Yep, yeah, you know what? Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video, uh, and uh, there's a good reminder that you should subscribe if you want to see tomorrow's, because it's daily for December. Some people have accused me of uh, using this as a cynical ploy to upload more videos during the month of the year where you make more money, and it's like, wow, I cannot believe- have you never watched a video on this channel? I openly show for air fryers at the end of each of these, by the way. Get yourself a 14-in-1 air fryer, link down below. Uh, I get 9% commission if you do. That's like $10 in my pocket, and you'll be able to cook 14 things at once. What's not to love? I, as someone who is so open about earning, like, believing that money is a good thing, uh, I, I'm shocked to believe that people think that I would upload more videos because I get paid more? Oh, it's crazy. Anyway, thank you for watching. Second channel. Don't care. Bye.